Obsidian is the best free writing tool anyone can use. Over three years ago when I looked at it, I thought, no, it's way too complicated, way too many buttons, it's too codey, it's not for me. But now I can say, actually, no, it is the best free writing tool. But there were three things I needed to learn to actually use the tool effectively. Looking at Obsidian, when I first opened it, I got confused because I was like, what are all these buttons? Why do I need this all? And it's because you can see here, this is a folder. Obsidian opens a folder, not a file. If I open up the quick start folder, you can see there's a folder inside of it. And that is what Obsidian is. Obsidian is this dot Obsidian folder and this other stuff that I don't need to know. And that means everything in Obsidian is on my computer and it just lets me edit text. If I create a new file, I now have an untitled file. And when I go into the folder, you can see the untitled file has been made in the folder. If I quickly rename that file, you can see it's changed the name inside of Obsidian. If I double click on the folder, it's changed the name inside of the folder because Obsidian is just the folder. And so now I can just type text, which is just like any other writing app, of course, because you just write in it. Don't bother worrying about Zettelkast and Atomic Notes, journaling, life management. It is a writing tool. So use it like a writing tool. In the left side, in this different color, the button at the top left lets you collapse the sidebar and open the sidebar, which shows you the file, so the brain dump file, and you can add a new note. So click on there, new note. Maybe you want to write down your shopping list. So you can type out what's in your shopping list on a different file to the brain dump. To group some of these files together, you can create a folder because inside a folder on your computer, you can make a folder. Having now made a folder, I can click it to open it. You can see there's nothing in it at the moment, zero files, zero folders. So I can click, drag, left click, drag, and then drop. And now I've moved the brain dump file into the folder, which we can see inside of the breadcrumb at the top of the file. So the brain dump file is in the notes folder. However, unlike other popular text editors like Word, when you highlight, it doesn't give you a pop-up for bold, underline, italics, but you can still use bold, italic, and strike through using what's called markdown. Now you don't really have to remember markdown because you can just highlight any text and use a hotkey. So control B, just like Microsoft Word, and it adds those symbols for you. For italics, it's control I, and strike through doesn't have a hotkey, but you can add one by going to the settings in the bottom left, going to the hotkeys tab inside of the options menu, we can see all of the different hotkeys that we're allowed to add and change. Going up to the search bar, typing in strike through, you can see toggle strike through at the moment is blank. If I push the plus button, then push a hotkey on my keyboard. So control shift S. Now when I have words, I can highlight the word that I want to strike through control shift S and now it's added the markdown to make it strike through. For headings, you can use the hash key and then a space and then type the name of the heading. And this is going to show a heading one with six different possibilities available, just adding a hash for the amount of headings you want. So two hashes is a heading two, three, four, five, and six. If you want a list for your shopping list, you can come to the start, push a dash and then space. And now you have a bullet list. If you want to do it all at once, you can highlight the words, go to the left ribbon and then open command palette, type in bullet. And now we have the toggle bullet list. So you can toggle all the bullets on. You see now it's added a dash for all of them and going to the bottom left settings into hotkeys typing bullet, we can toggle the bullet list as a hotkey, just like we did with the strike through. And I like that being control dot. So now when I highlight my list, I push control dot, it removes the bullets or adds the bullets. And if we come back to the hotkeys, there's actually a checkbox option. So let's add a custom command, control shift, enter maybe. Now when I push it, it gives me a tick box, which I can tick on and tick off. And I can use that hotkey to do all of those things to cycle through. So I can highlight all of that text, you turn them into tick box items, and you can see this is the markdown for a tick box. It's a dash, bracket, a space, a bracket, and then the words. And now you can tick them off. So when you're shopping on your phone, you can tick them off to say you've got them or you haven't got them, which now without pushing control S to save anything, if I look in that folder, we have the notes folder we've made. 
and inside that notes folder is the brain dump. And then in the main vault folder, we have the shopping list file, which is where having multiple files actually becomes a lesson on its own. Because if I now have an image, so I've brought an image onto my desktop, I can drag this into Obsidian. You can see the cursor is now there and I can copy the image into Obsidian. And now I have an image file inside of my Obsidian folder. So if I go into the quick start folder, you can see now we've got that circle pro pick image inside of the obsidian folder, looking to the files plugin by that folder, see the files core plugin, we can see circle pro pick JPG. So that's the image file, which if I click on is now showing just the image. And I can go back by clicking on the back arrow to the shopping list file, which is showing the image. The way Obsidian does this is it looks at the file. You can see this is the file name and it's put an exclamation mark at the beginning to make sure it's shown. So it's embedding the image file inside of the shopping list file. If I remove the exclamation mark, it now has a link to the picture. So if I left click on this, it takes me to the picture and I can go back or I can show the picture with an exclamation mark. The reason this is important is because now I'm in the brain dump file. I can use those square brackets that was showing. So square bracket, square bracket, and now it's showing me a list of all the files. Circle pro pick JPEG as one of those files. So I can click on that and now it's created an internal link. So a link inside of Obsidian to that file. So I can left click on there and it takes me to the image just like in the shopping list, but I don't have two images. I have one image, the circle pro pick, one image linked twice. And if I push the exclamation mark before that, it then shows the image. And when I'm looking at the image, those links inside of Obsidian are saved. So when I go to the top right, you can see the mirrored icon to the left side. We've got the collapse and expand of the left sidebar. There's another option in the right to open up the right sidebar, which has another core plugin backlinks. And you can see here brain dump and shopping list. So the two links, that's inside of Obsidian for this picture is being shown in the right. So when I click on shopping list, it takes me to the shopping list file with the image in. If I navigate backwards to the image file, click on brain dump, it now takes me to the brain dump file with the image linked. Because images are individual files, I would actually recommend creating a new folder, calling it images or assets or something similar, then right click, and set as attachment folder. You can see now attachments will be saved to the images folder. To move this image into the folder, I can left click, drag and drop. And now you can see at the top, the breadcrumbs, it's in the images folder circle pick. So if we open that up, you can see that's where it's been moved to. Now when I'm on the internet and I drag an image into Obsidian, you can see we've got the image saved and it's created the image inside of the images folder. If I was to take a screenshot of anything inside of my computer, then control V to paste the screenshot, it's now pasted the screenshot, created the image inside the images folder. All of the images with a unique name, which you can change by going into the image to the top and changing the name inside of the breadcrumb prompting us with a notification asking, do you want this to update all of the links? Now I would suggest always update, but you can suggest just once or don't update. You can change these settings afterwards. And now you can see the link has been changed in brain dump. So when I go back to brain dump, the image file has automatically changed the name. So it's still linked to the brain dump file with the obsidian image file. Another way to change the name of any file is by right clicking on the file in the files core plugin, then going down to rename, typing it in and then pushing enter to save. So now it's updated one link in one file which is this one right here. You can see the name search screenshot, but that's not all because we have multiple files inside of Obsidian because this is a folder. We have tabs you can see at the top. So this is one file. This is another file, very similar to a web browser. And what you can actually do is left click and drag one of these tabs all the way over to the right. And you can see now we've got a new color and I can left click drop creating a split screen. If I do that again, left click, hold, then drag as I come down, go slightly to the left, you can see now I've got the color underneath, I can drop it. And now we've got split screen 
horizontal rather than vertical, which gives us two panes. We have one pane at the top, another pane down the bottom, with one tab having the shopping list file and one tab inside of the top pane with the brain dump file. But you can add another tab, which gives you the option to create a new file, go to a file, so search for a file already made, or see the recent files, which is the same button as you can see with the hotkeys. So when I click on go to file, it gives me the option, but it gives me the option of files that are already open. So now I've clicked on brain dump, I have the brain dump file open in one tab, but I also have it open in another tab. If I then left click, drag this tab to the right, I now have three panes with three individual tabs with the same file showing twice. So I can be down the bottom of the file looking at the image and at the top of the file at the same time with another file open. And just like linking an image file inside of Obsidian, we can link another file by using these same brackets. So bracket, bracket, and now I can link the shopping list. So I have my shopping list linked in brain dump. So if I left click in the shopping list file to make it active, because that's what I'm actively editing, you can see it's now in the backlinks panel. So the internal shopping list link goes out to the shopping list file, which means there is a backlink to the brain dump because that's where the link comes from. I can then close the tab, close the tab. Now we've got just the one pane, one tab with the shopping list file up. It's still linked, so I can click on the brain dump and it takes me to the link, or I can click on the shopping list and it takes me back. Now, if the shopping list is a file I want to remember, I want to save because it's a favorite, instead of hiding it in a folder somewhere, I can click on the three dots, go all the way down and click on bookmark. Now I'm going to keep the title the same, so it's going to keep it to shopping list. I'm gonna save it. Now at the top right, I can see a purple bookmark sign. And if we go to the left sidebar, click on bookmarks, the shopping list has been saved. And just like the files, I can left click and drag, and you can see if I come all the way down to the bottom, I can move the bookmark core plugin panel anywhere inside of the workspace. So now the bookmark panel is down the bottom with the search and the files at the top. Or I can drag it up and put the bookmark above the other two. I can even left click, drag, move it into the main workspace. So we have the bookmarks plugin next to a file, or I can drag it all the way over to the left sidebar. So you can see there's the line. I can move it anywhere in between these plugins. So I'm going to drop it at the end. And now it's in the left sidebar, which of course you can drag it down the bottom and you can move any of these plugins to any location inside of the workspace giving you full flexibility to customize Obsidian. Which relates to the third lesson, even though you can, doesn't mean you should. All you need to do is write. When writing essays or novels or long scripts, having headings lets you use the outline plugin, which is essentially a table of contents. Click on heading four, takes you to heading four, five, six, etc. So if we come all the way down to the bottom of the file, push hash, and then add another heading one, you can see it's now going to show heading one inside of the outline, and you can navigate anywhere you want. Keeping track of the word count of the file down in the bottom right, you can see there's 37 words, 288 characters inside of this file, and that's all you really need to use Obsidian. And just like any other writing tool, you can go in, copy a link, so Control c to copy, and come into any file and paste the link. The only difference being because this is marked down, it can look a little different. There is the link, which if I have just the link, it will show me the link. And if I left click, it will then open up that link inside of the browser. But what this is doing is putting the link on words using a square bracket, square bracket, then a normal bracket, normal bracket. Microsoft Edge copies the links automatically like this. So if I come in and edit, I can get rid of that bracket bracket three. And now I have a link to YouTube that says YouTube. If your browser doesn't do that or the link you've copied doesn't do that, you can copy the link. Then when you highlight a word, control K, add those brackets and then control V to paste. Now you have the link 
on any words you want. This could be a link to a website or maybe something from Zotero, a Zotero URL, or literally any link you can think of, you can put it in Obsidian and it will take you there. Once you've used Obsidian for a writing project, whether it's an essay or some quick notes or a shopping list or anything really, if you don't find an issue, you don't need to add anything to it. You don't need to add any complexity. So don't. I have lots of other things in Obsidian for other reasons, but when it comes to my daily use, it's I open up a file, I write words, I open up another pane because I want to see two files at once, and then I write more words. There is no right or wrong way to use Obsidian, it's just a writing tool. If you have tips or tricks or anything else you want to share with other people, feel free to put them in the comments section below.